In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a Drukhari Incubi. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, or you just want to learn how to paint your miniatures and get them looking great and on the table, then please consider subscribing, and don't forget, hit that bell so you get notified of any new videos. This should be a nice straightforward one for us, so let's get going. Spray the model with black primer, use Chaos Black Spray, and then what I've done is I've just taken some water down a bad and black and thrown that all over the parts that are going to be black just to kind of unify it and make sure that if I do need to touch anything up, I'm going to be using the same colour. Now, you know, might be looking at this chap and thinking, uh, where's his head? Well, there's his head. Um, so basically all I did was I sprayed this with... Uh, Corax white spray is a lot easier to, to paint this because it's mainly white and bone colour. So rather than start from a black, I thought I'd save myself some time. And I've just given the, the black part a little bit of a an undercoat there with the abaddon black as well. So let's get going with the main part of the armour. So I've kind of run through and done a bit of a test on this leg. So we'll get onto the other leg um, and the knee and I'll show you how to do it. So the first colour we're using is Inky by Darkness. Now with Inky by Darkness, you can give it a a fairly kind of thick layer of Incubi Darkness because what you'll find is as it dries it blends uh, quite nicely down into the black so all I'm going to do is I'm going to paint that in on these panel parts here and then as I spin the model around where I've got the edge I'm just going to run the brush along it there so work your way around the leg with the Incubi Darkness and then once you've done that and all the other bits of armour we'll come back and I'll show you the next few highlight stages. Once we're finished with popping the Dark Reaper on all the edges we're going to go back over that with Thunderhawk Turquoise um, and again this is really straightforward you're just kind of following the bit you've already painted with a lighter colour and you're trying to leave a little bit of the dark reaper shown underneath so this is kind of like a line inside the line so you have to water your paint down a little bit and just take your time doing this because you need to be a bit more accurate when you're doing this stage than when you were doing the Dark Reaper in the stage previously. And as ever, it's always a good idea to use the, the shape of the model as much as you can to get these highlights in because you can just pull the brush along the edge. So like we did for the Dark Reaper, take your time and work your way around the edges of the model and we'll come back and add the final highlight on. The last highlight we're going to do on the armour is with Fenrisian Grey uh, and again you want to make sure that this is uh, watered down a little bit and you haven't got too much on your brush because this is much brighter than the Thunderhawk blue behind it. So in terms of how we want to do this we want to just put it on the, the highest edges the sharpest edges somewhere you've got the corners of the plates there so you can work your way around the model again where you can <clears throat> like on the blades you can just use the shape of the model to get those sharp edges in so take your time, work your way around the rest of the model. And remember, use this quite sparingly because it is much brighter and it will really sort of start to change the complexion of the model as you work through. You can already see that it's, it's starting to look a lot brighter with the edges. Okay, so work your way around, finishing that, and we'll come back and have a start on some of the cloth. 
Next up is the cloth, so we're going to use purple for this, and the colour Zarya's purple. So just want to pop this on all the cloth areas, being careful that you don't get any around onto the armour that you've already finished. So we've got the cloth that's hanging from the, the waist and we've got the bits of material that go into the belt there as well. We've also got these ties that come down from the arms. So we want to get those done. And also on the back we've got these plumes attached to these. I'm not sure what they're called. I'll call them back spikes I guess. I don't know. So we'll get that done, get all of it on that side and don't forget the back of the cloth there. And we'll come back and shade it. Shading the purple is really easy. Just going to take some Nuln oil. I'm just going to work it into the, the model. We don't want to put too much on because ultimately we don't want it to pull and create some really unsightly areas. So just work it round and then. We'll come back and start uh, highlighting up the purple. One bit I did do is I did the handles of the blades um, in purple because I thought <clears throat> actually that's it's probably good good colour to use. So we're going to work your way around and we'll come back we'll start to highlight. Once the null oil is dry you can just take some uh, Zarya's purple if you want and just kind of go back over some of the areas that you may have spilt now no, it's entirely up to you this this is an optional step you don't have to do it i'm just doing it so it smooths the transition a bit between the, the kind of the highlight and the colors underneath it so the highlight color i'm going to use is gene sealer purple and for this we just want to use it to to edge highlight so i've watered it down a little bit we just want to Use it to follow the flows of the cloak. We're watering it down a bit, just gives you that kind of extra little bit of flow that you need. And then on the ribbons we've got coming from under the arms, we're just going to draw it down the, the edge. Of those ribbons to get the highlight. When you're on this part, we just want to highlight some of those areas. We can also look to highlight at the top there as well. So when it comes to these hairs on the back, just do the same thing, just use the shape of the model. Should be fairly straightforward. Okay, so get your way around there, get all the purple highlighted, and then we'll have a little look at the metallics. The first metallic we'll do is gold, and for this I'm going to use Retributor Armour. Now, I'm going to use this for all the gem casings. So take your time and work your way around those gem casings as ever being really careful when you come close to bits you've already painted there's also some design on the arms so we want to just a little bit of paint on the brush and we just want to use the shape of that design to take the gold away from the brush so that we don't spill over anything we've already done. It's not the end of the world if we do. We just go back in and clear it up. But so I've spilled a little bit there. Just fine because we can just take some gold in and just clear it up. Uh, sorry, some black and, and tidy up any errors that we make. But like I said, the the less errors we make in the first instance, the less cleanup there is to do. Um, and then on these kind of back spikes. 
which is another official term. We've got things like this Imperial Eagle, which we can paint gold. So again, take your time, try not to get on the black, might need two coats. And on the weapons as well, we've also got these uh, these parts here, which I guess are the, the power units, which actually give the weapons their power fields. So just work your way around, get these done, get all the gem casings done, and any other sort of bits that you want to be gold, and we'll come back and we'll shade it. Nice simple bit of shading for that gold is with Reichland Flesh Shade. So just pop it on. Straightforward as that. You want to be really careful then when you come to the kind of bits that like these bits here. Because what you don't want to do is stain the kind of the black armour. So just take your time. Get the right glue flesh it over them. So let that dry and then we'll come back and highlight it. Once that right glue flesh shade is dry, let's highlight the gold. And the colour we're going to use for that is Liberator Gold. So, like we did with the Retro Drum beforehand, you don't want too much on your brush. Uh, and you're really just going to use this to edge highlight some of that gold. So, now we've got the embellishments on the arm, which is kind of going for that part that's facing up. Again, try and be as neat as you can. On the power, power coils for there. And then when we've got these icons there, we can just use the shape of the model to kind of get that highlighted. And you just on these, the gem holders as well, just work your way around. There we are, so that's the gold highlighted. Let's go and clean off the brush, and next up we'll have a look at the silver metallics. For the silver parts, we're going to use uh, lead belcher. And in terms of the things that we're going to paint with this, we're going to paint the sword blades. So just take your time with this. Um, and just be extra careful where the blade marries up with the the kind of the black part. You want to spill it onto there. So there's that uh, on that side and on the other side obviously there's two blades but there's also um, some spikes. So we've got some spikes on the shoulders. So there we've got the kind of blades on the back spikes as well. So just take your time working the metallics around there and we've also got the, the spikes coming out the front which we can do and we've got these elements of, on the on the leg here as well which we just want to give a coating in the, the lead belt here. so work your way around the rest of the model get all those silver bits done and then we'll come back and we'll shade and highlight it once we've got our lead belcher down, and don't forget, so you've got these parts here, we've got the sword blades, we've got these little clips, um, metal rings around the model as well, make sure you get those done. It's going to take some null oil, we're just going to put this on the larger silver areas, just going to worry about putting this on like the sword blade. Um, and the back spikes. Just make sure that you don't let it pull, so just pull it along. You want it to be quite thin, you just want it to give a little bit of differentiation uh, on the metallic. So work your ear on the model, get all that done, and we'll uh, have a look at highlighting all the silver. Once the null oil is dry, we just want to edge highlight some of this metal, and we're going to use uh, Vallejo Model Air Chrome. And all we're going to do, nice and easy, is just use the shape of the model to give us that highlight that shows the light glinting off the, the weapon. Same here on the back spikes. Just work that round on those. And then where you've got the rings, just, just highlight the, the lead belcher that you've got there. Nice and straightforward. So work your way around, finish all the highlighting. And when you come back, we'll have a little look at some of the leather strapping. 
So in terms of the strapping, we've got all this around the here, holding on all the trophies and these shattered soul gems. So the colour we're going to use to base it is dried bark. We're just going to work this on, taking care not to go over anything we've already painted. It's fairly straightforward in terms of how you apply that. Uh, nothing overly special. Just be careful when you're at these parts here that you don't get it over bits you've already painted, you don't get it over the black. Because like I said, as I always say, you can tidy up, but it saves time if you don't have to. So work your way around all those leather strappings and things that are holding on all of the trophies. We'll come back and we'll give them a quick highlight. When that's dry, we'll just give them a quick highlight with Gothel Brown. And this highlight literally is just pulling your brush along the, the line using the shape of the model to get that highlight. So that you get a nice break between the, the base and the highlight layer. So just work your way around with the Gothel Brown. Take your time because again you want to spill it. And that's the majority of this part of the model done. We've just got to do the the glowing runes, and then we'll have a look at the head with the, the horns and how we get that purple shadow on the model. So I'm going to go around and just finish this highlight in, and then when we come back, we'll have a look at the glowing runes. So this is what the glowing runes are going to look like once we've done them, and it's really, really easy to do. So the first thing is get some Corax white on your palette and really water it down so it's really quite runny. We need it to be runny, because what we're going to do is we're going to paint it into these runes just like that so we need it run it we need it thin so that it runs into the rune so just paint it into the gaps into those incisions in the plastic or in the model and then let it dry so I'm going to go ahead and do the back of this, we'll let it dry and I'll come and show you how to make them glow. Next step is really simple again, just get some Hex Wraith Flame. Don't want too much on your brush, but just paint it over those parts where you've just put the Corax White. And then just take some of it away so it just brings out some of the brightness of the white underneath. Just like that, so you've got some nice glowing runes, so do the other side as well. That's a really simple and easy way of getting some nice glowing runes. So we'll finish off these ones here, and we'll do the soul gems next. For the soul gems, I thought that I'd use... Sorry, I'm just pulling some reference up. I thought I'd just use some red and green soul gems. So I'm using Warpstone Glow for the green, and I'm using Evil Sun Scarlet for the red. And all I'm going to do is just paint over these soul gems, taking care not to paint over the existing gold that I've got there. And don't forget, you've also got one on the middle of the helmet, which I'll be doing green as well. So they're the green ones, and then I'll just use the Evil Sun Scarlet to do the red ones. So again, always make sure you don't got too much paint on your brush. Just work that into there. So let those dry, and then we'll just shade them a little bit and put some of those, make some of those cracks a bit more visible. I'm just going to shade the soul gems with some null oil. It's not too much. It's just enough to bring back the some of the shape of the of the gems, just like that. And then what I'll do is once it's dry, I'll just re-highlight it with the color underneath. I've also painted these tubes with the warp stone glow, so I'm just going to give them a little sh little shade as well. 
So we'll let that none all dry and then we'll go back in and we'll do some highlighting. So just to get a little bit of uh, colour back into the stones, all I'm going to do is just take the base colour. So in this case it's the Warpstone Glow. I'm just going to touch it to the raised areas, leaving the kind of dark patches in the in the recess. That's pretty easy to do the same with the Evil Sun Scarlet as well. So you don't have to use a huge brush for this, just make sure you've got a, a fine point on it. You know I use Windsor and Newton brushes. Uh, I'll leave a link to the ones I use in the description if you do choose to buy them. It does help support the channel because I get a small commission. So there we are, I think that's the body of this guy just about done. So. I'll double check it and we'll come back and we'll start work on the head and the mask. First thing to do with the mask is give these horns all a base coat of wraith bone. So let's work that on. Just be careful when you come down to those areas you've already painted. It's a really straightforward stage, you don't need to spend too much time watching me do this. So I'm going to go ahead and finish them on the rest of the mask and we'll come back and we'll start to get these horns looking good. Once that wraith bone's dry, first step, just get some skeleton hoard and paint this all over the parts that you've just covered in in wraith bone. And don't be afraid to move it around. The important part or the important thing to get done here is to just get a good even coverage of the skeleton hoard. So work it around the horns. If you get it pooling like that then just wick it away with your brush. Easy enough to do. And once you finish this part just let it dry and we'll uh, move on to the next bit and have a look at how we can get them increasingly darker towards the top and the good news with that is that it's really quite simple so get that finished let it dry and we'll come back and go for the next part once that first layer of skeleton hold is dry you're going to put another layer on and we're going to start this kind of halfway up the horn i'm just going to paint that on take your time with this work your way around so about halfway up so what you'll start to get then is the horn going darker. And the good thing with these contrast paints is that it'll just blend in for you. So you won't have to worry too much about any tide marks or anything. So again, let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll do um, probably one more coat of the skeleton horde and we'll highlight the horns. And the last bit of skeleton horde we're just going to kind of use this right at the right towards the tips. Now if you want it to be darker you can keep going with set uh, skeleton horde or you can use a different colour like wildwood especially if the skeleton horde is wet you can pop the wildwood on the top and maybe blend it up but I'm quite happy with how that shading has worked now it's transitioned it's quite nice it's quite subtle so it, uh, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to let that dry uh, and I'll come back and I'll show you how to highlight those horns and then we'll get the mask done and this Drukhari Incubi will be done. Highlighting the horns is going to be really easy and straightforward as well. So just take some wraith bone, you don't want too much on your brush and all you're doing is you're just following the, the design of the model up to the top there of the edge so like I said really easy and straightforward to start with and then what you're looking to do is just add some interest by just following these lines and I find that if you go quite quick you can get some nice differentiation in there and it's starting to look pretty good so I'll go ahead and finish highlighting these horns and we'll come back and have a little look at this mask and then we are ready for the table. The first colour I'm going to use for the mask 
is ethermatic blue. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to run it into the grooves in the mask and the eyes. So that will work its way into the best bit. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. Let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at how we shade and then highlight the mask. I shade the mask using Magos Purple. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some on my brush, not much, but then I'm going to wipe that in some kitchen paper so it takes most of the paint off. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at shading just in there. And under here. As well as inside the ears of the mask. And I'm also going to look at just shading under the horns. And a really good tip when you're doing this is to move the brush to where you want most paint because that's how the brush will deposit it. So you'll put most paint where the brush ends up. So just work around and get, get this shade the way you, that you're happy with it. Probably just going to move that around there a little bit more in the ears i'm probably gonna be quite happy with that so i'm gonna let that dry come back and then we'll highlight it so once that magos purple is dry we're just going to highlight the face mask and the color we're going to use for this is white scar this is going to be a real simple edge highlight exercise just going to work it down there being careful not to paint over any of the ethermatic blue I'm also just going to highlight some of these sharper areas in there, in the edges. So check you're happy with it. And if you are, job done. If you're not, just work with it, but don't overdo it with the highlight. I'm really happy with how that's turned out. So I'm going to stick this on the body, paint the base, and we're good to go. So there we have it, this Drakari Incubi is done, ready to go on the table. I think he's looking pretty good and a whole squad of these will be really striking. I really hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please leave a like and a comment down below. And as always, if you haven't yet, then please consider subscribing. Now, if you like what I do and you really want to help support me as a channel, you can by using some of the links in the description. You can use them to buy wargaming stuff from Goblin Games or anything at all from Amazon. Now, I do get a small kickback, but it doesn't actually cost you any more money that for buying things you're already going to buy anyway so it's a really nice way to help me continue making these videos thanks again for watching and i'll see you next time